Okay, guys, when I left you last, um, the bow was just set up here, glued up. You can see it's held its, uh, its natural reflex here uh, based on the tiller that we assigned it. And so I'm going to just take it out of its bindings here and kind of give you a flavor of what it looks like when uh, we take it out. So you can see it's holding a, a fair amount of its reflex, but like I told you, it'll give up about two or three inches there. Uh, this part of the process takes just a quick minute to get all of the bands undone here so that we can see what we finished up with. Now you'll notice that it gave up some of the some of the deflex that was there originally. But here, here's the shape of our bow. Okay guys, so you can see the, the finished profile on this bow. Um, actually a, a little more reflex than deflex. So, uh, you know, we, there are some different things we can do to address the amount of deflex versus reflex we got when, when we're uh, actually binding it down, and maybe that'll be the subject of a different video. Uh, but in this instance, just to kind of give you a feel for what I was talking about as far as getting this back to straight, so I'm having to put, I'm having to impart a fair amount of pressure on this bow uh, just to get it back to, remember, um, and I'm, I can't, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but you can see we're at about our pre-glued shape, and I'm putting an awful lot of pressure on this bow just to get it back to where it was before we glued it up. And so if you recall now, our belly lamb is in a relaxed state. There is no compression forces taking place on that EPE as of yet. Uh, so that's, that's really kind of the, the magic of the, the glue up process is drawing it into reflex as the glue sets. Um, so we're gonna, we're really gonna harness that uh, it's going to take a lot less wood to make this a very strong bow. So it's going to be physically light uh, and physically powerful. All right, I have laid up my riser materials here with the uh, bow, the glued up pieces, uh, our main laminations of the limbs and the power lamb here. And I've done a lot of pre-work uh, to get to this point. So let me kind of describe what we're looking at. So here I've, I ground down smooth just the just the grip section of my stave if that's what you want to call it and really kind of left the the rest of the limbs you know little remnants of plastic and glue and whatnot on there but really all i wanted to do was expose this main the center eight inches of the bow and that's where our grip is going to go and so when i sorted out my initial piece of the riser i got it centered you can see all the centering lines and then taped up like right, right up close to the edges where they're going to meet the belly of the bow. Um, I have also pre-ground, pre-ground those tips. See if we can see it in the light here. Yeah, uh, to a I don't know about a 45 degree angle, maybe a little steeper than that. But the idea there being that we'll glue it down, and it's not going to take a lot of effort for us to blend blend this piece into the belly. Uh, when you go in straight with a square square edge like this, right, if you just go straight in like here, you're going to really struggle to make that transition without digging into your belly uh, to get there. I have taken this and kind of, and kind of, I, I drew it to the arc of the, of the center there. So it's on the same, it has that same arc, so it, it should fit smooth to the grip. So I've ground down the thickest part of my riser. And you'll see I've kind of got it marked off there because one side's just a little bit different than the other. But we have it more or less. And you can kind of see light some through there. But this is pretty well set to our the curvature of our deflex. And so what we'll do is we'll get these guys. lined up here just like so and he will glue right in on those okay here's a little cleaner view of how that joints gonna look so you can see that that end block right here is just gonna end where we've already got the tapers going it's on both sides here so what that does is just makes things real easy uh, to clean up our fades you know we only have to trim out 
trim off this corner here and kind of decide how we want this grip to look like once we start getting to the finishing stages of, of tillering. Okay, couple helpful tent, uh, hints and tips here. Okay, so I have sanded out all of the markings on the belly. And you got to have all of your all of your markings sanded you out. You want these these edges to be sanded pretty smooth. So I, I'll, I'll sand it with a 220 grit. So 220 here, 220 here, and then on the flip side, 220, 220, and of course 220 right here. And the reason for that is when your epoxy fills in gaps, right? Uh, two things. One, if you have a pencil mark and it's underneath the epoxy, you will never ever sand it, sand it out. That pencil mark will be on your bow forever, um, unless you do some significant changes to the to your bow and sand it further back than you intended. Uh, the other thing is, if if the surfaces are ratted, rat, ratty, um, the glue will also fill in those spaces, and you're finished when you when you sand this out, cut out. You won't have a really smooth transition horizontal line across your limb at the glue line, it'll instead, it'll be, you know, jagged like my fingers here instead of smooth like an edge. And so you want those, you want these surfaces, these end surfaces to be very smooth and without, uh, without ridges. All right, guys, just going to survey our working space here, our workspace. Again, I had to come inside because the weather outside is just, it is too doggone cold. A, for the glue to activate. B, for me to feel my fingers. So I'm at the kitchen table uh, for this glue up, and it's a small operation, so it's not that big of a deal. But here we are with our smooth on EA40 uh, epoxy, mixing implements, gloves. Uh, I have uh, degreased my surfaces with acetone. Uh, it's not in the picture, but uh, just like I described in the, the bamboo backing glue up process, we've, we've uh, degreased that all my clamps, and uh, we're all ready to go up here since we do not have to be in any kind of hurry here. And uh, I'll just take you real quick through the glue-up process, and then we'll move on. I've already pre-mixed our glue, just even portions by volume of parts A and parts B. Uh, so this stuff is pretty much ready to go. Um, so I'm going to slide a little dollop in. In this instance, as we're dealing with such a localized piece of the, the bow that we really should uh, be concerned with working clean. We can work clean here in this scenario. Uh, now, kind of like gluing our uh, power lamb, we want to Make sure that we leave just an extra measure of glue out here on these extreme edges out here, and that's to ensure that we got we don't have any gaps. So the the last place you want to have a gap is right out here on the extremity. And if ever you've had this, if ever you've had your glue line compromised right here, it's a real pain in the rear to have your separation occurring right right at that juncture. And it's, all, it's almost impossible to fix. Uh, I have figured out a good process to fix it. That might be a subject of future videos. Uh, but always better to avoid that circumstance than have to put yourself through the uh, pain of having to uh, fix it. Well, again, guys, with this glue, uh, you're in no hurry and can do a lot of adjustments, and that's what I'm doing here, making sure that everything is adjusted just the way I want it. Got my parts all lined up. Let me get this a little more out of the way here. I'm going to get a little more mileage from getting these end pieces. Okay. All right, so here we go. Everything is set. I'm lined up. I'm lined up on my grip, and I'm lined up within my my limbs. And we are set. We'll let that uh, we'll let that dry now, overnight. And really, we only need to give it about 12 hours, just long enough to set up and and be good. We're not going to be stressing it in any way. Here are the results of our glue up. I've removed all the uh, plastic uh, to reveal. Uh, the finished product here is really not the finished product, but just uh, 
post glue up and so you can see the uh, squeeze out on the glue that, that occurred in between the laminations there. Next step now is to uh, go ahead and I'm, I'm going to take these off with the uh, bandsaw and then we'll go to uh, spindle sander here. I've got it outfitted with a pretty small spindle uh, to get into the finer edges of our fade here and so what I do and what you probably want to do I, we got to take all of the the glue uh, residue out of there and get down to bare wood what we don't want to do is grind into the belly as we're doing it and so there's a, a glue line between the very first lamination and our belly ply and we do not want to grind down you know divot out the belly and then back out that would cause a uh, hinge right outside of our fade so we do not want to do that got to be very careful while grinding so what I do is keep the keep the tape on and as you're grinding through and you're working between the the first riser lamination and the tape to take out the glue line as you start wearing against the tape you basically know your home and so you've, you're taking out the tape instead of taking out belly material and I'll show you how that what that looks like uh, as I as I go through that process. This is just a little tip uh, when you take your bandsaw in. You want to run your blade this direction and out. Do not run your blade down into the material. Uh, way too much opportunity uh, if, you're, if you're cutting this direction to have that blade slip and you end up into your belly wood, uh, into your, your laminations here. What you, what you do is you do irreparable damage uh, at a very, uh, very critical transition of your bow. So do not cut toward the meat of your bow. You want to cut away from your belly. All right, so always keep that plate pointed away from your belly. Hey guys, you can see uh, I have just cut just a just a rough cut to get kind of match up my fades there. Uh, we're going to take it to the spindle sander now and just try to get this rounded out. So our first goal is to get the, the main riser uh, kind of evened up with our two lamination pieces here. And you can see got a little bit of glue left here between this first the riser and the first uh, lamination joint. So we'll keep working on this. And once we get that dished out up in here, then we'll move down into working out, uh, working out this transition here. Okay, hopefully you can see this. You can see where I'm starting to get into the into the epoxy there without without grinding up my tape, which means I'm, I'm into that little transition between uh, the end of the first lamination of our riser and the belly. And so we're going to very carefully work this area. Uh, we probably will not take it completely off because in the course of finishing the bow, that line will eventually disappear. But here again, we're going to get ourselves as close to finished as possible before we ever get started with the whole uh, production of the of the bow. So a little bit more here and I'll show you what that looks like. Here we go. So you can see that everything has ground and it's pretty much we've gotten to the we've gotten to the belly just a smidge right here. And what I try to do is kind of work if, if you were looking at it to work the spindle across it this way and then across it this way. So it kind of gives you that rounded rounded appearance right here. Because when we go to, to tiller this bow, we're going to start by taking this rough edge off. So it's okay to kind of get into it on its edges, but you sure as heck don't want to get into it right right uh, across the center of your limb or the center of that uh, transition. So kind of work the edges, bring it to the center, and you're going to call it good. So this right here, we can see where we're taking away some tape, just barely. We're done. All right, got both sides sanded up. Here is the other transition, so you can just kind of get a real kind of close-up view of what I'm talking about here. So you can see where we're grinding against the tape. 
and taking out this glue line right here at the same time. So that's as close as we want to get it. And then as we go about tillering and working more to, to transition this in, this obviously is not going to be our finished transition. There will be more work that comes along with it, uh, and it starts to all blend together, and this line will all but disappear. So as close as we can get, that's the idea. And so now what we'll do is go ahead and uh, grind up the, the remainder of the edges here. We'll take this to the belt sander and clean up all of our edges down to raw wood, kind of like this, to the raw wood instead of all the tape and glue residue along here. And once we grind down to bare wood, there will be nothing really holding the, the tape on. And we'll take the tape off and, and we'll be free of all of the glue residue and down to bare wood. And we will have basically the start of our uh, stay. One last note, the uh, spindle sander that I'm using here, this is uh, this is 80 grit. So I did not use a 36 grit. I know that I talked about using a 36, so on my big belt it's, it's 36 that also goes on my spindle sander here. Uh, gross reduction, this is definitely, you want to go a much finer grit uh, to get into to get into these transitions here. note just make sure that you're taking wood off evenly on both sides otherwise you start getting running or start running into some opportunities for twists to occur so as soon as we hit raw wood on both sides we're gonna stop take off our tape and uh, we'll just go from there so here's here's how that looks and it just comes at this point you know I got gloves on so it's not gonna come off so easily but the tape just comes right off with uh, very little effort at this point this reveals the raw wood, and that's what we're after. So we're, I've just taken the uh, tape off the back, so ground everything down. Tape came off really pretty easily uh, on this side, and even in the best of layup situations and, and taking all the precautions that you can, sometimes you end up with uh, a little bit of glue on your belly anyway. And so here are a couple spots that bled through underneath my tape, and we're just going to take a, a real fine... Uh, this is just a Nicholson handy file. Uh, it's a double cut on one side, single cut on the other. And I'll just work with the double cut here and just keep the keep it flat against the, the belly wood and use the existing belly to as a guide to take off the, the glue. So I'm going to do that to finish cleaning this thing up and uh, I'll show you the, the finished product. Alright, so this is all the further we want to take it down. So this is just smooth. Alright, we don't want to dig into the wood around it to get get down below the glue. Uh, as we go through the tilling process, this will this will disappear 100, 100% that will disappear. You don't have to worry about that. So uh, we are now we are now at the point where the uh, we are ready to we're ready to get started making a bow. Because I got a little bit of tape left in a couple spots here, but uh, you can see the transition right through the the grip area here. Uh, all just very neat and clean, and you'll notice. I don't know if I can really get so close up on those glue lines. There's that looks precision. I mean, they're precision uh, laminations, right? And we know, you know, I'm from from how how much preparation we put into that. That th this was by no means uh, perfectly matched in through here. But once we glue it in the way that we did, and we use the the smooth on to do it with your your finished product. When you look at it, you can even see just a little bit here where the glue kind of finished out that transition between the bamboo and the epe. But when we're when we're done with this bow, I mean these glue lines are going to be sharp, very sharp, and you you uh, be hard pressed to find any gaps in there whatsoever. Uh, very reliable process for for getting everything put together and making it look real, uh, get a real professional finish in your in your finished product. Okay, so hopefully you can see the glue residue on the back of the bow there. Uh, it just kind of shows up as little islands of epoxy. Uh, to remove that, it's really not that difficult. Typically I just do it with the, um, with the draw knife, but I'll run the draw knife actually backwards. So I don't want to get into the, 
uh, bamboo in any way with the blade and it's just kind of as I mentioned before things have a real hard time sticking to bamboo and so this stuff just flakes it flakes right off the back with a little bit of encouragement you could do this with a knife a regular knife or, or even even take a, the edge of your uh, file to it you just don't want to get too much into the bamboo right so cleaning off the back is really not a big deal if uh, you choose to uh, leave that on as you construct you can do it uh, it's a little disarming but when you when you start flexing the bow all the pieces of epoxy start popping off the back and they kind of crack off and whatnot it is a scary sound but it gets the job done I guess it can like I said it can be a very disarming circumstance and make you very fearful for the integrity of your bow so I go ahead and just go take this off at this stage of the game it's not like it's a huge investment in time probably five minutes here just to take it all off and there you go so but you are gonna have to tiller this so this is not uh, this is by no means done we are just really close uh, to finish dimensions and if you were uh, you were to floor tiller this right now if, if you were to take this and, and give it a bend and I don't know if you're not gonna be able to see much in the screen there but the uh, the flex on this or, or the the effort it takes to to flex this bow is actually pretty extreme and he's already very thin uh, very narrow across its the width of its limbs we're we're going to really not we're going to work the belly as little as possible the idea here is to just get the wood smooth uh, when we start dealing with with managing the weight of the bow we're going to be taking the wood off the edges and that can be a pretty dicey situation if you don't go about it right uh, that'll be a topic of the next uh, the next video so uh, here we are uh, at the uh, basically at the starting line this is the way I view this we're at the starting line of this bow it's put taken a lot of effort uh, to lay the groundwork for it but now we're at the starting line we start flexing we start tillering we start uh, finishing off the grip all those things uh, so a couple more installments yet to go but uh, on the next one we're going to work at getting this bow uh, to weight and the tillering process as we go through that uh, as we go through that exercise thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you with the next episode